Assalamualaikum and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the virtual learning platform and experience by Mark this evening. Um, we're glad that all of you join us and also to all the viewers from our Facebook, uh, Modest Associate of HR Professionals. And uh, this is a very special program that we are uh, conducting this evening, uh, just for everyone. But I know we have a lot of students on our platform this evening and also a lot of teachers. We hope that you had a good, uh, good weekend. And obviously this uh, probably is gonna be a very helpful session for all of you. Um, our title for this uh, webinar and the platform tonight uh, is your guide to future success, career guidance and perspective of growth opportunities. One of the key areas that MAP would like to focus is really on the topic of career guidance and how we can help uh, you know, school students, uh, you know, whether you're studying or not, if you have you know, uh, completed your school after graduation, or even teach us how we can guide, or even those who are working in the industry. So we have, um, you know, we were able to put together a wonderful um, set of uh, speakers this evening, and I'm very grateful for all of them. But before we actually get started, I mean, I'm grateful that we have lots of participants that joined with us this evening. So to all the participants, uh, thank you very much for joining. I know you have joined us from different parts of the Maldives, from, you know, from the north, from down south, from the central zone, uh, and all, all the different areas. So thank you very much for joining joining with us. Um, if, if I may ask you to go to the chat box and tell us if you're a student or a working professional, or if you're somebody who's looking for a job, or if you're a teacher. So go to the chat box and write, if you're a student, if you are a working professional in any industry, it doesn't have to be, you know, teacher. It, it, it you know, it, yes, very good. So, so you have a lot, quite a lot of students. We have, um, yeah. So if you're a student teacher, working professional, hospitality teacher, that's great. I'm sure you're gonna love the teaching that is gonna happen on this platform tonight. Very good. I'm sure this is also very helpful for our panelists and speakers this evening, as they can see who they are basically addressing and you know we're very grateful that many of you join uh, just on the uh, you know on the weekend evening but we think it's a good time to do this 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 event to all the facebook viewers and if you're watching us from facebook live please do participate and you can write comments on the facebook too so um uh, just to explain you the administration side of the, this we're using the uh, webinar platform you probably already know this is why you are not able to obviously see participants and uh, and and you not you not be able to on your video and also the audio uh, we want to make sure that you know we, we we cover all the content our speakers needs to cover at a minimum interruption but we'd like you to be interactive so you have the chat box you have the q and the box stop posting the questions and of course if you want you to speak towards the end and if you raise your hand we will on your microphone and you can actually speak so for probably for a good 45 minutes it's gonna be a conversation that we will share, but we would like to keep you interactive. So you can go to the chat box and write your comments, feedback, thoughts, reactions, concerns, if you have, we'll be happy to address that for you. So without uh, any further delay, um, I would like to introduce our panelists for this evening. Um, and, you know, we, 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 we had a look and, you know, we believe um, these ex, uh, you know, expert speakers are going to give us a great um, insight into what we have to present. Our first um, our panelist I would like to introduce is Dr. Asit. Asit is, uh, you know, an advocate and a community leader in terms of good qualities, good uh, practice in the community. She, uh, you know, she, she focuses a lot on the um, education sector, but also at the same time uh, guiding the community around you know, good ethics, doing the right things at all times. She's always known as a great community leader uh, and someone that you know, walks the talk. And she currently holds the principal role at Hitadu School in Addu City. Um, Asia, uh, would you like to say um, you know, just a few um, a welcoming uh, uh, remarks to all our participants, please? Uh, thank you so much, Susan, for the opportunity and the kind words. Uh, yeah, and welcome all the participants. Uh, glad that you all uh, joined us tonight. Um, as you all know, we are tonight going to have a discussion about career and choosing a career and uh, the importance of uh, counseling and uh, the help, uh, especially the students need when they are choosing a career. And I believe that uh, this is a time that uh, we need um, um, right information about choosing a career more than any time because uh, we have so much going on in our society. 
And also, I would like to highlight, um, uh, even in the opening, that we are actually a very, very uh, privileged uh, bunch of uh, people in terms of, I, I think, even if you look at uh, most of the countries, we have free education up to uh, degree. It's actually very, very great. So uh, I even um, I would like to... Uh, request or everybody to use that opportunity wisely and to use that opportunity wisely we need uh, the, the students to know what they're going to do in, in the um, future so I think uh, this discussion will be great on that basis and um, welcome all the panelists and the students and once again thank you so much Susan for the opportunity I'm looking forward for a great discussion and uh, um, a great evening great uh, thank you Asia, we're happy that you're a part of the panelists, and I'm sure some of your students probably are, or your colleagues, teachers are probably also on, on our uh, panel discussion this evening. Uh, I also want to remind all of you that we're actually doing this in partnership with uh, Scheme, uh, some Community Empowerment Association, where uh, they actually focus a lot on bringing this sort of event. So we discuss actually with their president and also their ex-co, and we're actually doing this in partnership. So I want to thank them for promoting this within the, um, uh, the, the, the um, most Southern um, atolls. Uh, and I know we have quite a lot of participants there. So I want to appreciate and, and acknowledge their commitment to partner with us in bringing these different events. Um, our next um, speaker this evening uh, is Hassan Saeed, uh, the resort manager of Digadic Motives. Somebody who carries a lot of experience in terms of um, both the human resource aspect and also at the same time, the operational background. And uh, Hassan's got a very important message later on to all of you, even if you're working in the hospitality industry, not, or even in any industry. Um, and I see Hassan as a generalist in terms of, you know, not just limiting his learning and experience just to hospitality business. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you must have read recently some of wonderful articles and thoughts Hassan has shared with us by different platforms. And uh, right now, he uh, holds one of the most senior position in the resort, uh, managing the operation of the hotel. Prior to that he, that, he held several other positions within the industry too. So I would like to Hassan, in fact, to say a few words uh, to all our participants. Hassan, over to you. Bismillah rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. And a very good evening to everyone. Uh, uh, welcome, our panelists. And, um, you know, um, we are all given uh, a definite in you know a finite uh, number of breaths in terms of our lives uh, the, the, the duration of our lives on earth and for somebody to dedicate part of that time to something like this is 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 something that needs to be appreciated so i want to appreciate the participants uh, you know for their time for giving us part of their you know time this evening and and that that's the best gift someone can give to the other person um, you know jalaluddin rumi said you know many centuries ago that you are born with wings why do you crawl uh, through life um, we are all born with wings and we all have great potential to reach whatever heights that we set our minds to um, I'm also fortunate enough to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a parent and, and I'm, I'm parenting three kids who are all above 18 now. And, um, you know, a few, few weeks ago, my daughter, who is 20 now, shared with me, he sent me, she sent me an Instagram link to an article that was uh, published on corporate motives that was actually written by a 17 year old girl. And the article was about why, you know, teenage girls are indecisive about their careers. And my daughter said, you need to talk about this. And uh, I, I think what this 17 year old girl has highlighted in her uh, article is she, when she highlighted this thing, she was speaking, uh, you know, on behalf of her cohort, uh, on behalf of her generation. So um, I think career guidance is, is something that we all need to pay more attention to. 
uh, as parents, uh, as, as society in general, I think we need to pay more attention to, uh, you know, giving more guidance, guidance, not, not influencing, not coercing, but guidance. So with that, uh, I'll hand it over to you. Very good, thank you. Um, I think this, uh, that, you know, that's a very, very good, good, good point that you shared there. I'm sure you're going to bring some more um, content in there as, as we're going to see your questions and it's just, uh, you know, going to be such a good conversation. So our next um, speaker this evening is Aisha Tosay Muhammad, Career Guidance Counselor at Giazdin International School. Um, you know, not many schools, they have a dedicated Career Guidance Counselor. Obviously, we know that Gazdin International School do bring some good practice in terms of um, high quality education, you know, both from primary all the way down to secondary education. So we actually, uh, you know, uh, spoke to her and she said, you know, definitely she's going to do it. And also she's an exco member of PAMP. So we're very happy that this being one of our main target for the next two year term, as many of you know, MAP, um recently elected the new executive committee and um, Aisha is one of our exco member. So, um, and also Aisha, you know, practice the human resources before she was a part of the, you know, the human resource, uh, you know, organizations where she practiced it. And then obviously now she's in a field where she is able to guide students and even working professionals in finding the right career path. Aisha, would you like to say a few words as we open the uh, conversation? I think Aisha, microphone needs to be on. Sorry. That's all right. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Afi, for the kind, uh, wonderful introduction. I think um, I agree a lot with what um, Mr. Hassan has said. Um, uh, I would like to quote on one uh, thing that is... Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> The thing is, uh, tonight we are going to discuss on a topic that is very uh, necessary for our youth, students, teachers, uh, I believe even for the industry professionals, uh, parents, because for a large period of time or for over the past few years, what we have thought about is once you finish your education, you can jump into your dream career. But that is not the right way. There are so many other hurdles we have to go through to find the dream career you want. Uh, there are so many other things we have to factor in. So I think it will be, tonight will be a very wonderful opportunity to, for all the students as well as the teachers to understand what career guidance is about and how to go about in the future. And having industry professionals like Hassan and educational uh, uh, professionals like Dr. Asia, I think it will be a very uh, good opportunity for all the students to uh, clear, your, uh, clear their doubts and queries in this session. So hope we'll have a very fruitful discussion. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, everyone. Um, so now all the participants, you have seen who our speakers are this evening. Um, go to the chat box and tell us, how excited are you to listen to our conversations? If you're excited, go to the chat box and write, Yes, we're excited because we like to you know, get your uh, participant participation. Um, so go to the chat box and write if you know how excited you are. If you're very excited, go to the chat box and write yes, excited. Okay, very good. So keep the comments coming. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So as I said at the very beginning, our conversation is obviously about career guidance, and our topic that we've chosen this evening is your guide to future success career guidance and perspective of growth and opportunities. And I wanted to share a key point here. Whatever our speakers are going to share tonight is their views and their perspectives in terms of the experience that they have earned over the years. If I look into Hassan, I mean, he's got, you know, over, you know, 15, 20 years of experience. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Asia being a community leader, someone who continuously grow, despite the growth mindset, uh, you know, um, always advocate for good practices and leadership in the community, apart from a full-time role as an educator, as a leader. And Aisha, who is very passionate about, you know, making sure that, you know, she guides not just the students, but anyone who comes for career guidance and counseling. To her. So this is going to be their views based on the experience, and we will, I'm sure it will help you. So participants, please go to the chat box and also to the Q&A. If you have questions, please do share it. My first question this evening 
to is to Hassan. And um, the question is, from your experience, Hassan, in the hospitality industry, why do you think that career guidance is important um, for those who are starting out? Uh, obviously, you know, it's a very specific around hospitality, but in general, in any industry, why is this such an important topic, Hassan? Thank you, thank you, Afif. Um, I'll start. Um, I'll start. I'll go back in time. Uh, let me go back um, about 25, 26, 27 years back. Um, I remember back in 1989, that's when I attended hotel school. Most of you weren't even born then. <laughs> um, we used to, uh, the hotel school was, was located in Sosangi, in Hemwer. Sosangi is just the same road as ADK. Um, for so some of the, the this generation, um, we used to live next to Machangoli Sahara, and then we went to Sosange. We used to meet a group of teachers who went to IT, which was uh, located at Bodoge in Mafan. So we crossed paths every day, and and every day we would cross paths around Galor Sahara, and and these these were there were a bunch of ladies, you know, girls back then. Um, and every day, they would, when they see us, they would say, you know, because we were going to the hotel school, uh, they said we were Um Look, there's, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, stereotyping associated with uh, uh, work in the resorts, because this is, you know, Professional work in resorts, in hospitality, in tourism has not been appreciated for a long, long time. And in the, in, in the past 20, 30 years since I've joined this industry, I've seen very little change. But there is encouraging change, but there's very little change. I'll just tell you why I think there's little change. Um, I, I sat in a HOD meeting uh, about six years ago. Um, with, with, with some colleagues, 99% uh, men, by the way. And we were talking about why girls aren't joining the industry. And then I asked them one question, you know, I asked them, if you have, some of them have daughters. And I said, if you have daughters, I know some of you have daughters, would you allow your daughters to come and work in resorts where you work? And you guess what? all of them, nobody responded. Everybody looked down. That's when I knew that they, they still don't accept that they still don't want their daughters to go to resorts. So there is, there is a lot of misconception around work in resorts. Now, the issue for me here is because, you know, this industry is the biggest, the largest employer in the Maldives. Uh, we bring in about 70 cents of every dollar that comes into Maldives. And we need people, we need Maldivians to take leadership positions in this industry. And we've not been, you know, showing them, giving them the right guidance in terms of careers in the hospitality industry. So that is why I think, you know, career guidance in hospitality is very, very important. And for me, the, you know, what students of hospitality need to understand most is that, you know, there is a lot of diversity in hospitality, especially in Maldives. The Maldives tourism product itself is very diverse. A diverse in the sense, um, you know, di diversity comes from, you know, it's a unique workplace. It's an isolated, self you know, self-sufficient remote island where you have people working, sleeping, eating, you know, doing everything on a small island. Um, and you're stuck with, uh, you know, multinational, multi-religious team. So it's, it's a very unique work environment. So unless we go out there and deliberately talk about these things, um, students and, 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 and the younger generation will not understand these things. And, you know, the fact is that in the resorts, in the industry, you know, if you look at one resort, a typical resort, a typical resort has 
many, many different areas of work. You know, you, you have your core hospitality that's made up of your food and beverage, housekeeping and front office operations. But then you also have your support departments at the back and at the front where you have your, your, your regular professions like, you know, accounting, finance, your, your sales and marketing, your human resources, your engineering professions. You know, we need all these different types of people to, to keep a resort running, to keep a resort, you know, in operation. So whatever, you know, area that you want to go into professionally, um, chances are that resorts have the employment opportunities for you. So I think this is something that we need to go out there and start talking about, you know, at school level, at community level, um, at resort level, you know, everywhere. Uh, we need to start more uh, talking more about these things, you know, making sure that everybody understands the importance of getting young people into this industry and, and, and letting them know uh, the different diverse, you know, career opportunities that's available within the tourism and hospitality sector. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. Very, very good, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in production into, and, you know, covering the question, and you're so right. I think, um, you know, this is the largest, you know, uh, economic, you know, um, um, uh, part of, the, of a nation, the occupation, and I think it is important that we encourage those who are coming out of the school. And the way to, one way to encourage it is to make sure that we reach out to everyone who is coming out of school and who really wants to join and be an encourager rather than be a critic so that they can join and we share an experience. And I'm sure for the rest of our conversation, you're gonna share a lot of wisdom into your years of experience. In fact, the story that you shared is, um, you know, is a misconception, is, a, is, is sometimes we, you could call it as an uncon, you know, um, unconventional thinking, you know, behind when somebody goes to horror school or when someone does something in the video. So I'm sure you will talk more about it along, along the way. Now, uh, I would like to ask this question from Aisha. Aisha is a career uh, uh, guidance counselor. And I think, you know, at times we all have different definitions. I'm sure if I ask, you know, from all the nearly 70 participants here on our Zoom um, room and also within the Facebook connections, if we ask, I'm sure they, you know, they will say, uh, you know, there'll be different definitions. So Aisha, what is career guidance and counseling? How, how does this relate to students and how does it work? Uh, okay, you are very right. Uh, people have a misconception in understanding what career guidance is about. Uh, a lot of people think when you go to a career guidance counselor, that it's about uh, they are the person, uh, that person will help you to make a decision. But the reality is the decision has to be made by themselves. The career guidance counselor job is to provide the information, give them all the uh, choices and help them to understand themselves, who they are, what their interest is, all these kind of things uh, about an individual person, uh, that is what a career guidance counselor is about. So what, uh, it's not only in Maldives, all over the world, a lot of people, like I said, they think that when you go to the career guidance counselor, they will uh, tell you, okay, this is the career you have to go. Uh, you can take teaching as a profession or you can take uh, architecture or engineering. But the reality is you have to understand yourself, especially students, when you are in your O-level or during your A-levels, you have to understand what your passion is about, what your interests are really, what are the opportunities you have around you and what is your long-term objectives. It's very important that you have a set goal because with that set call only, you will be able to find your passion. You will be able to make a long-term career choice. So whenever you talk about career guidance counselor or career guidance, don't ever think that that person will make a decision for you. The decision is up to you. No one else is going to make that, that, that decision for you. You have to make your own decision. But to make that decision, you can get help from the career guidance counselor to understand yourself, the choices you have. That means uh, industry, like Mr. Hassan said, um, our community is lacking information. Students do not have all the information to make the right choices uh, all about the industry. Like we, it's not only tourism we have or hospitality and travel we have. We have education, we have engineering, we have construction industry. 
there are so many industries that are growing in Modis and students are not aware of these industries. So you have to make a choice. You have to understand what sometimes you might think that, okay, this profession is not in Modis. So how am I going to pursue that? But we are talking about global uh, marketing or global work. So that means you don't necessarily have to chop yourself working in Modis. You can go for an opportunity in overseas even. So as long as you have a patient, you, uh, you have found what you, what you are really interested in, that is what a career guidance counselor can do, helping you to find, uh, make that decision to you by giving you the choices, by uh, uh, helping you to understand yourself. All right, Judith, thank you. Um, you made a very, very good point, which is our job as career guidance coach and counselors are not just to um, tell this is the route you have to go. I think this is the best job for you. I think you got this, you know, but rather our job is to help you to understand your purpose, what do you want to achieve, what do you want to do, and then linking that actually with the opportunities that are available in the, in the community. And, and I think that's really our, our job should be because at the end of the, end of the day, when, when, when you after the guidance, when somebody goes and be, be successful, all the rewards are actually for them. We just played a very small part, right? So very, very good. And I'm, I'd like to go to Asia. Um, I said, you spent time with students. It's, and I, I, I had the opportunity to, you know, uh, be at your school. Um, and, you know, I, I mentioned this comment last time, you know, everything rises and falls on leadership. And when I went to your school, I saw how clean everything was, how well you put things together. You know, um, my perception of the leadership of the school is always based on what I see inside the school, you know. <laughs> so I want to congratulate you. And I know many of your students and teachers would agree on this. Um, now, my question to you is this. Um, from a school leader's perspective, what do you think students consider most when they choose a career path? Or do they basically choose it based on their parents' choice or their own choice? And or based on a community's view or based on money or based on the compensation that they're going to get? What's your take on this? And could you talk about the student's view and what's the current you know, uh, discussion points within a school community or parents' community? so much first of all Hussein, for the nice comments um actually um, a very interesting um question and i'm sure most of the students uh, who are in this platform will know the answer already because uh if i if i give a very short answer it will be it is everything other than other uh, the, their own choice everything you mentioned other than the, your, their own choice most of the time maybe not always as Hassan uh, did, I, I would also like to share an experience uh, 20 years back, maybe, when I wanted to uh, choose a profession. Actually, uh, today my passion is um, education and I don't want to do anything else, but that was not the case, maybe when I wanted to um, start a job. Uh, actually, I wanted to uh, join tourism industry. Through, I wanted to become a chef. But uh, very obviously, I couldn't get the permission uh, to do so. So uh, um, I joined uh, at the teaching course, which was available, uh, most easily available for me, uh, not because I love teaching, but uh, luckily that became my passion and that became my love. Um, so no regrets. I think that is, um, I, I take it as, as what we call guidance. The guidance, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, um, my parents knew me, my siblings know me well, and they decided it or they don't want to, to send me to resort. Uh, so they, they made the decision, but yet it turned out um, uh, uh, something good to me. But that, is, that may not happen always. Uh, here what happens is uh, uh, in my experience where I have uh, spent a lot of time with students, as Usain said, uh, my experience is that when the students even finish grade 12, they really don't know what they are going to do. Uh, we have faced many cases where students finish O level and go to A level and choose a different uh, stream. Uh, they, they finish science here and they go to high school and uh, choose business. This has happened. Uh, sometimes a mistake we, uh, because I'm also a parent, we uh, parents do is the day the child is born, we decide that our child is going to be a doctor, an engineer, or, or whatsoever, what, what we desire. And what we, then what we tell is, we tell the kids, 
this is what you are going to be. You are going to be a doctor. And, and sometimes we hear the students call, the parents calling them, my doctor, my engineer, these kind of words. So what happens is they stop thinking at that point. They stop thinking, they stop exploring actually what they want to do. They think they have to be a doctor. They, they, they have to be a, a engineer. And there are unfortunate cases, not only tourism industry, there are unfortunate cases where we have faced situations like very bright students in the school, they, they, they say that they want to be a teacher. And the response the society gives is, really, you want to be a teacher? You are so good in studies. Why not you become a doctor or an engineer? So this is the mindset. This is the mindset that even teaching, where everybody gets trained, the teachers train everybody, yet people, uh, we have this uh, mindset that uh, the most bright uh, students or the ones who are very good in academics should not do it, join teaching, professions like teaching. So, so these kind of influences are really there and it is, it is sad. So I would say, yes, 50% uh, or influence comes from the parents, which is actually not in a bad intention. They want good for their kids. They want to see them successful in the future. So uh, in a good motive, they do it, but sometimes it happens. Yeah, society plays a major role. Uh, as I said, uh, the beliefs of the society that certain jobs are like these, th th those are good. Uh, uh, some, some jobs, are, some professions are good over the others. These kind of stereotype thinking affects the students in making a decision. And um, another factor which I have experienced, uh, which plays a major role in students choosing a, a, a profession is, or a career is money, actually which we usually not talk about. Actually, what happens is some of the, some of the kids, they really live in a bad situations, economic wise. So the only thing they see is money. They want money. They want money as fast as they can because they are like lacking lots of privileges because they don't have money in their uh, maybe family. Uh, so they choose a path where they can earn the easiest and they can earn the most. So due to this, sometimes they skip education and go straight to whatever available job. So this is also an area we need to uh, consider and we are talking about career guidance and career counseling that it, it is an important part. So I just want to say to everybody, all the listeners, even our participants that uh, our students or the young people need to choose what they love not what others want them to be. Uh, and, um, but yes, they need to be guided with the right information. Not, somebody is not needed to make a choice for them, but to give them the right information and guide them towards the right decision. I think uh, that is what career counseling comes in and that is uh, why, where we can help them a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I said thank you very much, uh, you know, for, for sharing. And it's interesting to share that you wanted to be a chef. And, you know, you would have been with us in the industry by now, Hassan. Probably uh, um, Asya would be an executive chef. Who knows, Hassan? What, what, what do you think, Hassan? I mean, isn't that amazing to hear the story? It is amazing. It is amazing. I'm, I, I know Asya. We, we, we're family friends. and um, But I didn't know that she was you know she, she had this uh, intention to go into the industry but you know she's a wonderful human being and she can be whatever she wants to be and then she has uh, the capacity to do so and i that would have been great yes uh, we need more more ladies we need uh, more participation from the community uh, more deviance to take uh, leadership yeah. positions like you know we, we we need more chefs asia we need more chefs yeah more deviant chefs yeah, I would, I would imagine that she'll have to now, since she shared the story, would actually, you know, tell her to start a Kurdish from, you know, Addu City or the southern parts of the Maldives, you know. <laughs> we'll have that conversation after the panel. Uh, Hassan, actually, the next question is, is to you, linking with what Asya mentioned. Um, you know, you've been, a, a, you know, a practitioner, um, you know, for most part of your, uh, your career. Um, and in, in your view, what are some of the personal qualities that you feel our youth should try to develop for career success in the industry. All the participants that you are, that you're listening, that you're viewing this, I mean, this is going to be a very important message from Hassan. So take notes as Hassan goes through. Hassan, over to you. 
Um, I think um, Aisha has already mentioned the importance of self-awareness. Um, I think I, I, I'll not just I'll not go there. I'll let Aisha talk about the self-awareness part. Um, I think for me, one of the most important things is self-control. Uh, self-control and, and the ability to delay gratification uh, and then to stay away from instant gratification. Um, there was a study done, uh, I think this is a longitudinal study that, was, that has been around for a long, long time. And um, one of the best known you know, psychologists, uh, Walter Michel, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, I think no, last year, I think. Um, the study was first done in the Bing Preschool in Stamford. Um, in the 50s or 60s, if I remember correctly, where he, he worked with uh, little kids of three, four years, and he's, he gave them, uh, you know, sweets, candy. And, and the, there was, the experiment was, you know, he would give them uh, one candy and then say, okay, if you want to eat it now, you get one candy, but if you can wait, 20 minutes, I'll come back and give you three candies. So the students weren't, the kids weren't really forced to take the one or, or wait for the three. They, they, they were free to choose. And it was interesting to see, you know, some of them really fought the urge to, to eat the one candy, but some of them waited. And then what they did was they, they went back and looked at the, you know, success throughout like, you know, 20 years, 40 years down the line. And what they found was, you know, consistently those, you know, kids who delayed the urge to eat the candy and who waited were more successful on, on you know, multiple, you know, dimensions. So the, the ability to, to control your urge to, to, you know, do things impulsively, is I think one of the most important things that you can learn, um, you know, as a student, as a young person, you know, something, a quality that will, uh, you know, benefit you in your career in, in the long run. You know, as, you know, when, when we were, you know, young, starting out in the industry, um, we had lots of challenges, you know, I, I remember, the first time I went to a resort, uh, you know, I, I had to sleep on a bunk bed uh, with 19 other people. We about 20 people in, in one room and we didn't have attached toilets. And, and I had to go uh, to the toilet that's about 20 feet away. And then I had, um, I wrapped my towel around my waist. And then I, while I was going to the toilet, somebody, you know, pulled the towel from behind and, that was my first day. That was like, you know, welcome to resorts. Uh, but th there are many, many instances where you can get. Yeah, as a young person, you need to understand that, you know, self-control can get you to higher places in life. You, you know, you might want to do, you might want to have fun today. Uh, but fun today at the expense of success tomorrow may not be the right choice. So uh, sometimes you have to control your, uh, you know, self-control, I think is one of the most important things. And I think the second quality that I will mention is, um, you know, pro-social behavior. Oh, it, it's, it's not actually altruism, but altruism and pro-social behavior may be two different things. Um, altruism is when we are just selfless and then do things towards the other person without expecting anything in return. But being pro-social is actually, you do things, but you also expect things in return. So I think pro-social behavior is one of the most important things, um, especially um, those wanting to, uh, you know, go into jobs where you have to collaborate, communicate, and and do things with others, work in teams, because I think work today involves working in teams. Uh, most of the, even, even at schools, you know, wherever, most of the workplaces are about teams. And if you're working in a team, I think pro-social behavior or altruism or you caring about the other person is, is, is very, very important. So number one, self-control. Number two, altruism. 
Um, and and all, I, I think in, in the global world, we also need, um, uh, we also need uh, cultural you know, awareness, cultural sensitivity. I think it's one of the most important things. As, as, you know, sometimes this, this may be a taboo subject, but, but I, will, you know, I will talk about this. Um, being a Muslim society, being a Muslim community, we, we don't really like people from other religions. We, we kind of, you know, we have, you know, um, maybe it's an implicit thing in our system. We don't admit to it, but we still have, you know, something, if, you know, if somebody drinks, you know, if somebody consumes alcohol, we don't like that person, you know, but, but as a human being, I, I, I think, you know, cultural sensitivity is something that we need to, you know, Im, Im, you know, uh, imbibe in, in our kids and, and um, inculcate in them from, from a young age. I think, um, you know, uh, Maldivians who studied abroad, you know, understand this very well, but I think still within the community, within the islands, within Maldives, uh, we still need to, uh, you know, promote more cultural understanding, cultural sensitivity, because we can't enforce, you know, our values on other people. But even if they are different, we still have to, you know, you know, consider them as an equal human being. So for me, you know, these, these qualities, you know, like I said before, I think Aisha will talk more about self-awareness. I will not talk about self-awareness, but self-awareness is also an important quality. Um, altruism, pro-social behavior, self-control, and, and cultural sensitivity, I think are very, very important qualities that um, I would say um, anybody given, going into any industry uh, should have these qualities. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, very uh, good um, and important points, I suppose. And I'm sure the um, teachers and uh, you know um, professionals that are already working that are listening to our conversation this evening would definitely agree with us. And perhaps these are things that we can practice and teach in our institutions in in, in our community. Um, to all the participants, I see we already got one question which we will take uh, along the way. But if you're enjoying our conversation this evening so far, uh, please go to the chat box and write yes. So give us a, a comment there so that we know you are there, you are listening. I mean, we know you are listening. You're probably enjoying the conversation. But go to the chat box and write if you're enjoying this conversation. Yes, very good. Uh, so keep, the, keep those messages coming. My next question is to Aisha. Um, based on what Hassan already shared there, um, we, we all understand that it is important that the students make their own decision in regards to what they want. Um, what's your take on whether when you, when you join a job or when you want to choose that, you know, your career graph, right, is not a linear curve, right? Or, you know, it, it all depends on what you like and, and you know, uh, what's, what's the purpose of what, what, why you do what you do, right? What's your take on this whole segment around and how important it is uh, as a career guidance coach to share this with the with anyone that comes to comes your way to get some guidance or coaching uh, it's a very good question uh, and i'll uh, relate to what hassan has said uh, in a, when you are entering into any career it doesn't matter hospitality or teaching education or construction it doesn't matter. The most important thing I feel like is uh, you need to have the patience. Patience that uh, everything doesn't come easily. You don't have a shortcut. Uh, just like Dr. Asya just mentioned that uh, due to the economic circumstances, students are forced to uh, make a shortcut, like uh, taking a job that uh, gives you a higher salary. But later down the line, they understand, okay, this is not what I really want. This is not the career path I want to go. I want to go into another field. Uh, like Asia uh, said, uh, the first time when I uh, wanted to choose a career, it's not to choose a career. When I completed my A-levels, I knew that I want to be in human resource field. But then I wanted to identify what is the best place that can give me the kind of training, guidance, and growth. And I found that it was hospitality industry. 
but like as uh, dr asia said i had that i had to make that difficult decision of not going into hospitality industry because i was a girl and i had that fear that my family will not approve of me of going to a resort or any place like that. but i felt a very special is one of the best industry where you can learn uh, hr so the question is uh, uh, going back to your question career graph is not linear so because of that we have to be very patient we have to have that patience when we choose a career or when you choose your education because um, a lot of hurdles come through uh, when you are working if you are not able to uh, mingle with people especially like customer service customer service is in an area where uh, every industry is inclusive of customer service but if you are not a people friendly person it will be a very difficult decision for you or it will be a very difficult time for you to uh, pursue that post so the most important thing is you have to understand yourself that is self awareness you need to understand what and this is where it's important for you to make goals at an early stage if you can make your goals it doesn't have to have to be like 10 years goals or it doesn't have to be a lifetime goal but at least if you can come up with five year plan or a 10 year plan you understand what are the things you need to do to achieve that path if you want to be a teacher what is the best education program you need to do what is the number of years you have what are the number of years you will have to take to complete uh, to reach that stage and when you join a career uh, right now uh, in the past um, from my experience what i have seen is a lot of students when they come for an interview they do not understand where they are going to be they take a job just to uh, for the time pass until they realize okay what is their career path and then the other thing is they want to earn a high salary so they just take anything that comes their way but with high salary also comes a lot of responsibility so you have to be able to make that decision where you need to be able to take responsibilities you need to have that patience to endure all the difficulties that you go through because this is if this is what you really want then you have to endure it that is where the self awareness is about so if you understand yourself if you have your goals set then that is i don't think there will be any difficulty for you i would like to refer to another thing that uh, uh, dr asia said about students and parents i mean parents making a decision for school uh, children um, our community is uh, i think right, it's still we have that uh, uh, influence on our uh, children uh, starting from the choice they make from stream selection students are asked to select a particular stream this arts but maybe due to the limitation of our communi uh, community in education sector they are not able to uh, select but if we can give that opportunity to students i think the most important thing is opening the dialogue between parents students and the society of about what they really want and how it can be beneficial to the community in the long run i think that is where the decision is important you need to understand what you can give it to the community in the long run so if you can understand that by yourself i think it will be a very easy uh, choice for all the students to make which career path they really want thank you very much uh, quite a good coverage on that question and i think the key takeaway here is um, self awareness you have to understand yourself that you know you, have, you can use the career guidance counselors to have them ask several questions from you so that you they understand and once you understand yourself you know exactly what you if you love you know for example uh let's say if you love flying and you like to go to different parts of the world and you know you know you must a question from the care guys is kind of so what is the best option for me you know should i go to the hospitality industry or the aviation sector right i think that's where a lot of questions can be asked and once you understand exactly what you what you want then it can kind of link with the specific goal and an objective which you have to do to get into that specific career and i think that's really what 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 you highlighted there um so um 
with, with this, I would like to go to Asia and to ask a, a, a question. Um, obviously, this kind of link with what I just said. It is always good to choose a career in the field of the person's patient. Like you understand your patient, you know what you mean. We we'll say, you know, we're so passionate about this and that. But in your view, what are the challenges most people face when choosing a career? Asia. Yeah, thank you, Usain. Yeah, based on my experience, uh, it goes on from uh, fear to lack of awareness. Um, all these things can uh, actually uh, toss up roadblocks uh, to the especially. Actually, um, uh, I would like to uh, highlight a few things which I have experienced throughout when uh, dealing with students, especially. Uh, actually, um, so students, they uh, try to look for something which is perfectly fit for them. I think uh, that is something which does not exist, and uh, our young generation need to understand that. Um, they sometimes waste a lot of time looking for a career which perfectly fit them, and uh, they need to understand that uh, there is nothing which perfectly fit to anybody. We have to Actually, throughout the process, we have to learn, we have to uh, actually fit ourselves to it. So uh, they can start with exploring. If they are not sure, actually, they can start with exploring something. And uh, they need to understand that it is okay to uh, change their career in between if, if something does not work for them. So just waiting uh, for that perfect fit is not a choice. Second, actually, lack of right information and awareness is very, very something which is, I'm, I'm actually glad. I actually was uh, these days thinking that COVID, uh, due to COVID-19, we have, uh, I, I, I don't know if it is the right term to say, but kind of uh, actually it, it has blessed us in many ways. And these webinars and so many sessions from the professionals is something actually which is very good. Before, before we were uh, thinking that we don't have um, area guidance counselors in Addu, so we cannot take a session for our students. Now the thing has changed. Webinars and um, Zoom meetings, Google meetings has become the new thing. So with, with that, um, actually, uh, Gazdin International students are very fortunate to have a career guidance counselor like Aisha, but it is a very rare thing in our community. So another challenge the students really face is the right information and awareness, uh, which is not available in our society. Um, the other thing is, what if I fail? That question, actually, the fear of failing, the fear of not doing something uh, to the right expectation, uh, is also holding back our our um, youngsters. So uh, the solution for this is uh, again finding the right information about the job and um, talking to the people in the field and uh, sharing with uh, their I mean getting their experience and then um, uh, working hard again fail, uh, with the understanding that failure is not an ending as always Susan says it is a beginning right. So uh, the students, I think, need to understand that failing is not the end of their career. It is just one step ahead of uh, their career. And um, the other thing, the last thing I want to highlight is that the challenge, the, the, the young generation, especially the students of uh, uh, 16 or maybe 19 as they finish all level, is the, the obligations they have in life. Uh, some, some of them are actually expected to take lots of responsibilities even at a very young age. As I told before, uh, money plays an important role in everybody's life. So uh, some, some of uh, them really need money and uh, that, that has, due to that there's a high probability that they leave education and go into a field which they do not have any interest at all because they need to go to a job. As Aisha mentioned, they just look uh, at the Gazette, find there's an announcement for a job, they apply, they go to the interview, and they feel lucky if they get it because they need money. So that is again another challenge and they end up uh, as uh, in an office or somewhere which they actually do not belong. Uh, so that is another uh, challenge uh, um, the youngsters are 
um, facing and I think we as a society need to help them in that aspect as well. Um, so uh, to wind up, I would like to say that there's no other way, just, just uh, there is only one way which is like um, giving the opportunity for our students, our youngsters to choose what they love to do and helping them and guiding them in that process is the only thing, uh, only, only thing we need to do. And I hope that uh, with these kind of discussions with people like Hussein and Hassan and people in, in industries, I think uh, um, there will be a change in our society. Even if it is a little bit, I hope to see a change in, the, in this aspect at least. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, yes, I, I agree with what you just said at the end. At the end, you know, one step at a time. So one school after the other school, you know, definitely we, we, uh, we you know, we'll continue our programs. And you know, in fact, this year we have plans to go to different parts of the Maldives. Unfortunately, we are in a very uh, challenging situation when we weren't able to travel this period. Uh, so obviously we, we won't be thought of them. But if you have any school teacher, school leader, that is actually on this call this evening, and you would like Mark to do this for your school, for example, for to connect with your team and do it just for your school, for your students. For example, you know, you 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 could put on now, you know, a, you know, screen on your school, have all the students, and we'll do all the uh, arrangements in terms of you know virtual side. We'll find the resource people. Let us know. We'll be happy to do that for you. You know, because like Asia mentioned, our community grows when we all do things together. But I'd like to pick up on your last point, I'll, I'll say about one of my favorite, what, you know, what if I fail? Uh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, that's something that we need to start developing and we need to have that mindset within us is because you, we have to start somewhere to get, and, and you, know, we can't, you know, we get an opportunity and we say, well, what if I go to this place and what if they do that? I mean, I love the story Hassan shared with me. Um, you know, about how uh, 20 years ago when he joined the hotel industry, you know, in a room of 20 people back then, that was the, you know, the, the way the industry was and things had changed. Hassan is a resort manager today. He's definitely not sharing a room with 20 people. <laughs> so, the, the, and, and you know, the, the point is you have to start somewhere to get there. And he must have had lots of, you know, experiences where it didn't go the way he wanted. But he must have learned a way to get through that. So this is where I like to get the next question to Hassan. If you have to, Hassan, if you have to give one piece of advice to future hospitality leaders, what would that be? Or anyone that just that joins and moving forward, what would be the key message there, Hassan? Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alfie. I, I will start with uh, Rumi Court again. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Rumi. Uh, there's one quote that goes like, you know, why do you stay in jail when the door is open? You know, we, we all hear this parable about, uh, you know, if you, if you chain, uh, a, you know, a, a baby elephant, um, you know, even with a very, very small, very, you know, weak chain, that elephant will just settle into that, you know, chain and then won't move even when it can just break free. It will just stay chained. Um, we are willfully blind, you know, uh, most of us are willfully blind to, to certain things. Um, one of the, um, I think the question on the Q&A &A is also about, you know, along these lines, you know, does, you know, adults influence the stereotyping within uh, the adults about particular professions and jobs? Um, yes, stereotypical thinking is, is something that's perpetuated within societies, within cultures. So it, it's not something that you pick up yourself. It, it's something inherent in a population, within a population. Uh, sometimes these biases, they're also biases. Uh, we are biased towards certain things. These biases are implicit biases. Implicit meaning they're not explicit. We don't, we don't admit to it. We don't know that we have this bias, but we still have that bias. Um, and and th that is where the stereotyping comes from. Um, you know, I remember uh, back when we were young, you know, uh, if you had long hair, you are an undesirable. But we know a lot of people who, who are, you know, devout, you know, 
praying five times, you know, people still have long hair. So, I mean, your religiousness or your decency doesn't, you know, come with the length of your hair or your facial hair or how you groom yourself. It's something that comes from within. Um, if I have to give one piece of advice, yes, that will be, you know, break free from the chains that hold you. Um, and for me, breaking free means trying many things. Uh, one of my favorite authors is, is David Epstein, um, who wrote the um, book that's called The Sports Genes. And in his latest book, is called Range. And, and Range is about, you know, what makes people successful. And, and, and according to um, Epstein, uh, LinkedIn data that was shared with him suggests that most people who make it up to the CEO level of companies are people who've tried many different things in their career. They don't stick to one career trajectory. They, 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 they don't, you know, uh, stick to that linear career growth curve. They, uh, they tried many different things. They moved laterally, you know, from, from you know, uh, one industry to the other, they, they, they made sure that they exposed themselves to many different situations. So uh, for me, I think if I have to give one piece of advice, that piece of advice will have to be, um, you are a person with multiple potentials. Um, don't just stick to one thing. But even when I'm saying this, um, you, know, you know, there are a lot of things that, that you know, we, we get a lot of advice, you know, go find your passion, you know, pursue your dreams. But then I think the point that Dr. Asia made about, you know, you can pursue your dreams, you, you can pursue your passions, you can go, you know, uh, go follow your dreams, but you also have to earn a living. So where do you find that balance? Find that balance between um, what pays you and, and, and where you can also practice your own passion. And for me, uh, I've, I've tried many different things in life. Um, I, I've, I've also taken a break from the industry and went into island administration. So, uh, and, and I, don't, I don't regret it. So my advice is try many things. And then with my experience, I, I think what I've, seen, uh, what I've seen in my kids and also with the youth that I worked with is that, you know, your passion uh, when you are a teenager, you know, change when you are into your 20s and you're in your 30s, you find a different purpose in life. And you, you, you start seeing that you enjoy different things, you love doing different things, and, and you, you keep discovering yourself as, as we grow, as we learn, as we unlearn things, you know, uh, when, as we grow out of old paradigms, we, we keep changing, you know, passions keep changing, interests keep changing. So don't hold yourself, don't change yourself, don't stay in jail. So go out of jail, you know, try things, try many different things. So, you know, this, this world is accelerating very fast. Um, again, one of my, um, you know, favorite authors is, is um, New York Times columnist, um, and his book is called, Thank You for Being Late. And in Thank You for Being Late, uh, it's about, you know, how this, there are three different types of accelerations, you know, um, markets, mother nature, um, and, and, and um, this is one other thing that I can't remember, but it's all about how volatile, how uncertain, how complex this world is. And in, in a complex world, you know, we, we don't have the same jobs, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have the jobs that we have today. And 15 years from today, we probably will not have the same jobs. You know, today in America, you know, the, the best jobs that are suggested to people are, are, you know, technology related jobs, like, you know, front end designers or data analysts, you know, these jobs didn't exist 15 years ago. So it, it's very difficult to, if you are just stuck in one career path, it's very difficult to adapt. Uh, people who, who are flexible and who, who can adapt easily will be the people who uh, you know, are most successful in the future, I think. Um, and also, when we are you know, in human resources, we, 
we categorize people, you know, according to their skill sets. And, and, you know, we say, you know, like when someone has a very in-depth understanding, a profound understanding of one area, you know, or a, like a domain specialist, that person, if that person doesn't understand, you know, a little bit of other things around the world, or is not street smart, as we say, then he may he or she may not be able to work with other people. So in, in human resources, we are looking for T-shaped people who have a very broad knowledge of a lot of things and a deeper understanding of one core area. Better still, you can become a, you know, a pie-shaped person where you have you know, a deeper understanding of two areas and a narrow understanding of, of a breadth of many, many things. Um, you know, again, there are two schools of thought, you know, you have your early specialization and you're trying many things, you know, you, you early specialization or 10,000 10, hours of practice. Again, you know, Malcolm Gladwell came up with this phrase, 10,000 hours of practice in, in Outliers, one of his uh, books. Um, again, he's, he's one of my favorite authors, but sometimes you have to disagree with uh, even your favorite people. Uh, you know, 10,000 hours may not be the right thing, like we Epstein, uh, you know, suggested. He comes up with this story, Roger versus Tiger. You know, it, it's the story of Roger, Roger Federer and Tiger Woods. Those are the two most, you know, illustrious sports people of our generation. Um, Roger Federer in tennis uh, and, and Tiger Woods in golf. Um, they're you know, path into prominence can't be more different. Because Roger Federer didn't play tennis until in his late teens. On the other hand, Tiger Woods was already partying with, you know, proper golf stuff from two years old. Even before he was, he was able to work, he was given, you know, golf stuff as toys. So they, they had two very different approaches to, to you know, success. They, they took two very different paths. So what we see, you know, glamorized in the media, in the headlines is that, you know, early specialization sometimes works better, but it's not the truth, you know, and, and also one career, one career path, you know, one specialization, very, 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 very deep understanding of one subject doesn't really give you as much success today as it would have given uh, 10, 20 years ago. Because today, you need to synthesize knowledge from many different areas to come up with one concept. You know, uh, my brother-in-law is an endocrinologist. He is, is, is uh, graduating next year. Um, a super specialization in endocrinology. So, Endocrinology is how, you know, you study about hormones, your endocrine glands that produce your hormones, you know, hormones regulate, you know, our body, our energy levels and everything. So endocrinologists study uh, your hormone levels. And then um, you also have organizational, you know, psychologists who also study how people behave, people's energy levels and everything, you know, throughout the day. But these two are doing, you know, things very, you know, in two separate labs. They don't talk to each other. So we have this discussion because I'm, I'm concerned. I'm always talking about, you know, increasing people's productivity. And he's, he's, he's trying to keep people healthy by studying, you know, endocrine glands and all these things. But we need to come together to share this knowledge so we can together come up with solutions for people. So... I think synthesization of knowledge, you know, you know, learning about many, many different things, you know, being flexible, being adaptable. I think that that's, so for me, uh, if I have to give one piece of advice is, you know, try as many things as possible. You know, don't just stick to one career path or one passion or one thing. Try as many things as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Um, I, I like what you know. How I mean, I know you. You are somebody who reads a lot, and I always like when you when you present and speak. You you, you share about the books you have read. Um, I haven't read the range, and thank you for being late. You know, I'm very excited to read it because by 
uh, listening to this, um, you know, it just seems very interesting uh, to books. Um, so thank you for sharing. I, uh, I'm sure our participants are, you know, um, watching uh, both on Facebook and also on Zoom must have taken a very good note of. And I'd like to, uh, you know, just highlight on the point there, you know, in order for us to do many, many different things, for example, even if we have, for example, a full-time job, there are many ways we can engage in community. So one of them is being, you know, take part in voluntarily activities or programs. You know, for example, the, you know, the country's going through a, you know, severe pandemic that probably, you know, we haven't, you know, met before. We may not meet again in our lifetime. Um, so if you don't find an opportunity to help, to coordinate, to be there, and if you can engage in one of those activities, you probably learn a lot of leadership skills, you learn ways how people does things, the crisis and so on and so forth. That's again something that you learn. There's definitely one day you can use those things that you learn in the, in the job that, that you have to serve. Maybe the day when you do that is the day when you get paid. But where did you learn those skills? Actually, when you did the voluntary part, right? And I know Hassan, and not just you, but also the uh, two other speakers, plus many of you on this um, session might be some of us who are interested in doing these things. So thank you very much, Hassan, for that point. I'd like to go um, into Aisha, and there's actually a question also on the question panel, so I'd like to link that with. One of the questions that we often get is that when I finish my O-level, this is for Aisha, when I finish my O-level, should I go directly into a job or should I go directly into a bachelor's degree? I mean, you know, you start then diploma and then you continue, right? Or, you know, what should I do? I mean, do I really have to complete my A-levels? Do I have to do an apprenticeship program? You know, what's your take on this? Because there's also a question, in fact, from a participant who says, would you recommend A-level or college directly? So I mean, right on the question that we actually agreed to discuss this evening. So go for it, Aisha. I think uh, all the students to, uh, tonight who are on, uh, on this uh, session, I think this is a very important question for you. Um, in my experience, I would recommend for all students who complete their all over to go for a uh, I Because this is about your development. I don't think uh, most of the students in our community are ready for a full-time job to take that responsibility once they complete uh, their because uh, uh, a lot of students, uh, uh, they feel like they are eligible for everything. They have a right to earn high salary. They have the right to be on a top job, but it's not like that. And this, the importance of A-level is because it gives you a door to understand yourself. Again, that self-awareness. In, in that two years, you learn new things and you understand yourself better. Okay, by the time you complete your A-level, you might want to be a pilot. But once you complete your A-level, you might understand yourself. Okay, pilot is not, uh, that career path is not for me. I do not have that kind of stamina. Maybe you have learned new things in your A level, like engineering. You might go for an aircraft engineering area. It's the same. It doesn't necessarily, like Hassan said, it doesn't necessarily have to be from one air. Like you don't need to be specialized from a very young age. You have to explore. So that is the A level stage is a stage where you can explore. But when I say this, I know that in more this right now, we have a, uh, students are not given the opportunity to explore. So if there are industry specialists in this seminar, uh, in this session, I would like to advise them, uh, at least open the opportunities or at least give us the students to explore what, they, uh, what their industry is about. It doesn't necessarily have to be one week of training. Give, show them how that particular industry is going around, how that particular job is, what is the progress, uh, what are the stages you have to jump uh, or go through when you, if you want to achieve that particular. For example, a person who is interested in customer service, show them what customer service is about, show them what kind of career path a customer service person has. So going back to the question, it's very important for you to do your A level instead of going to college, instead of going to uh, doing your diploma, because A level doesn't give you a specification. What happens is when you go for foundation programs or diploma programs, you are narrowing yourself to a particular stream or to a particular area. When you do your A levels, you are you are getting more opportunities to learn new things and to understand yourself. 
you are opening yourself for more opportunities from that you can make a decision and you talk uh, you just mentioned about apprenticeship and everything students who complete their a levels i feel like they should take a gap year because it helps again to understand what they have studied from their a level they are able to understand uh, and practice what they have learned from their o level and a level in their apprentice programs or in their gap year uh usually in uh, in the uh, overseas what happens is once you complete your undergraduate program only you get an internship or apprenticeship so i think that is right but before you go for an undergraduate program it helps you to narrow down your educational program whether you want to do a business program whether you want to do a science program whether you want to do an arts program or anything this the gap year really helps so students who think about whether they want to study a level they want to go to college you should go for your a levels complete your a levels enjoy that period because i feel like that a level and college period is a a period where all the students are able to grow they understand themselves who they are they get that self awareness what their passion is about what they really want to see themselves what they can do in the community and for example uh, a lot of questions come among girls like once i start a life what happens to my career what should i do i want to have this balance so all these things you can identify yourself when you are going through this stage so don't be in a hurry to make a decision of going uh, selecting a career once you complete your o level we have uh, in our community now it, the all the students are getting that opportunity to study their degree program so go for it go for your a levels complete your a levels after that take a gap year to do whatever you like and then you choose a degree program because that will really help you to narrow down that will help you to understand what kind of work environment what people are you uh, learn to understand the communication skills team building all these kind of things uh, will be uh, you will be able to understand during this stage so yes my advice is go for a levels thank you aisha i think it's uh, very very clear um for sure there will be times where some of the students or uh you know some of the youngsters when you know they complete the school they may just say well you know here's what I'm playing to do and you know that you know if you believe that's what what's going to work out for you that's all right we're basically sh sh sharing our professional recommendation in terms of that um you know if if you are a, 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 if you are about to have a conversation with a career guidance coach counselor i'm sure you will be able to perhaps identify that and narrow it down to exactly what you want and then draw a path along the way um i will go to uh, ask you directly on that uh the next question uh which is basically the last question of our panel uh, discussion tonight and then we'll take up of questions right after this from participants so do keep uh, sending your uh, thoughts your your questions we already received a couple of them um as in general we see that sometimes people do not have a specific career choice until you know uh, very late how important it is to decide on a career choice at an early stage and how can the school system help the students in doing this what's your take on that thank you again um yeah uh, actually um from what i see uh, with the students and um the experience i have had with the students uh, for um a couple of years uh, students do not make a career choice till they uh, even even sometimes till they finish um their o levels uh, when i say that oh, of course there are students who know what they want to be from a very young age um and there are so many disadvantages due to that sometimes they end up taking the wrong stream and as i mentioned before later they have to change it and uh, they are not sure about what they are going to do and uh, keep on wasting uh, so many years uh, without studying and just um, stay stand like that and due to that sometimes they lose that uh, interest uh, of studying and end up uh somewhere without continuing their study uh so ye yes it is very important uh, even what i believe uh, is um from a very young age we need to talk to the uh, kids about what they want to be and what their interests are what they like and explore let them help them to explore, explore actually their 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 
what they like to do and their interests, their strengths, their weaknesses. Uh, not only the schools, but yes, parents also can do it, but um, schools can play a major role in that. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, as a school leader, I'm saying this, and I also agree that we are not able to the, to the extent, uh, not, not able to do it to the extent, extent we should be doing, because uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, so we have very few professionals that, uh, of the field, like um, career guidance counselors or career guidance sessions. Uh, we, we happen to take, like when the students go to grade 10 or grade nine, or, or um, uh, echo, uh, based on the system, now we have when they finish grade eight and when they have to take a stream, we take one or two sessions of career guidance and that's it. And that's not enough. That's not enough. And that's not how it should be done. It's not like I always believe because uh, professional development uh, and things, that, that's, that's my field. And I always say this, that uh, taking a session about something is not uh, actually the most helpful way uh, to make people understand something. It is a continuous process. So career guidance counseling uh, uh, is also a continuous process. And from a very young age, uh, students need to explore uh, things. The other thing I, I would like to highlight on this regard is that we, from a very young age, we need to uh, teach the kids uh, to set targets of life. Uh, if I want to be this, I, I, there's no way that anybody can stop me. I'm going to be this. These kind of targets, if they can set, definitely uh, it, will, it will be very clear in their mind. In that regard, I would like to highlight actually, uh, when I finished my teaching and I, I, I came to, uh, I came and joined as a teacher and I was teaching grade 11 students. Uh, and I, I still remember because uh, I call these critical incidents in life. And one of those incidents I, I never forgot was uh, one of the students told me, Miss, what are you going to do next? And said, I want to be a principal of one of these schools that is then Muhibuddin school uh, that mm, currently the, um, uh, I mean, th that time it was. Um, so I, I said, I want to be a principal of one of the schools in Ad Addo City. And, and, and the, the kind of love he gave to me still, I do not forget. I, I mean, I, I felt that he, he was trying to tell me you can't do it. So I still uh, don't, I have never forgotten. So from there, um, I, I, I always, re I, I re that day I realized actually how much I wanted to be a principal. And so many people ask me even now, after PhD, why are you a principal? And uh, I believe there's nothing wrong in being a principal after PhD. And that it, I, my answer is this is my passion. And I, I love being a principal. I love being an educator. And that is the exact reason why I'm here. So from there also, I knew what I, go I wanted to be and I worked towards it. So uh, setting these kind of uh, targets uh, is very important and from a very young age, not only schools, even parents, I, I, I would like to recommend that talk about setting targets, talk about uh, their interests, talk about what they want to be and then help them uh, ultimately decide I mean, let them decide what they want to be. And it will be very easy. I always tell even my staff, my students said that I, I, it is never difficult for me to get up very early. I mean, we come to school around 6.30. So um, very early we have to get up and I have three kids who goes to school. So we all get ready and come to school. So it's not an easy start, but I, I never feel tired or uh, I never see as I'm going to work. I look forward, for example, for a, after a long break tomorrow, I can't wait to come back to school and meet my students and work here in this environment. So um, school environment. So it's because it is my passion. So that's, I think, uh, um, something we need to teach our kids. And uh, again, I, I would like to, uh, to wind up, I would like to say just one thing. Everyone should get the opportunity to choose what they love to do. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that was a good, uh, good story that you shared, but also sharing how patient you are. And I always say, you know, teaching is influence, nothing less, nothing more. And what you all do as educators, whether you are a teacher in a school, a leader, or any, any, anyone, I mean, we all 
are here because of what you did for us. Wherever we, wherever I mean, show us a, a you know a successful person. One way or the other, they may have done many things, but there's somebody who influenced influenced them, and they must be a teacher in one way or the other, right? Or somebody that they taught something. Not one doesn't need to be in a school to teach, but there's many different ways. And I love the way how you describe how patient you are, and he's absolutely right. And uh, it's a good story you share because it happens often when someone when when you know you ask for somebody, what do you want to do, and then say. Well, I want to do this, and it goes like, <laughs> give a laugh, like it's not going to happen. You know, we should be encouraging and say, wow, that's a great idea. Um, I, I uh, you know, I, I, I remember I had actually the opportunity to um, recruit and interview Hassan's son to the hospital industry on an apprenticeship program many years ago. I actually learned that it's Hassan's son very recently. Um, then I think I did complaining about that. And I remember what he told me, uh, you know, he's asking, what do you, what do you want to do? And, and, you know, there was a apprenticeship program. So you comes with just from the school and he was telling me that he just wants to serve people and he loves serving people. And now I know where it came from actually. So there must be Hassan. <laughs> so all the participants, we actually come sort of the official questions that we have prepared for our, our speakers this evening. Um, go to the chat box and tell us how much you have enjoyed this conversation with us this evening. I know we've taken an hour, but we know you are loving this conversation, so why we should stop, right? <laughs> I know we've taken a little bit of more time than usual. So go to the chat box and tell us how much you have enjoyed this conversation and share some love and care, some virtual messages to our speakers this evening that share some insights there. We are going to be using this moment to actually take some uh, question, uh, questions from all of you. And so, with this, I would like to have one question, and I would like actually uh, Hassan to respond to this question. Um, what advice do you, this is from one of the participants, Marian Lukma. Uh, what advice do you have for fresh graduates with little experience who have not yet worked in the tourism industry, but are keen on working in the industry? Hassan, if you could highlight on that would be great. Thank you, Afif. Um, I think, my advice would be to, to start from the bottom. Because I, I still remember, you know, the advice that I got from one of my mentors, um, who most of you probably will know, um, you know, people of my generation will definitely know him, Abji, the football coach. And he, he was one of my mentors. And then his advice to me when, when I started out was, go to the most basic stuff, you know, clean the floor, you know, wash the pots, clean the toilets, you know, do, do, do the most basic stuff. Because, you know, in this industry, especially in hospitality industry, if you want to get to the top, you have to start from the bottom and start appreciating everybody. Because, uh, you know, the most important jobs in this industry, in, in hospitality, uh, you know, the ones that deal with, you know, cleaning, making sure everybody is, you know, safe, healthy, you know, environment is clean, you know, people who do the basic stuff are the most important people. And so what happens most of the time is that, you know, we go study and then we get our degrees and then come join the industry. And by that time, we are not willing to go wash dishes. We want to go straight to the managerial positions. But when, we, when, we, when you go straight to the managerial positions, that's like being thrown to the deep end from day one. You know, most of those who, who, who start out at these positions don't survive because they don't appreciate the work that's done by the people, you know, who, who does the cleaning, who does the washing and, and, and you know, make sure that everything works behind the scene. Because in, in hospitality, when I train people, when I do orientations, I tell them we are trying to perfect the swan technique. Because if you can imagine a swan on a very calm and smooth lake, the swan moves very, very gracefully. The, the first thing that comes to your mind is that it's very graceful. That, that's the picture that you see. It's picture perfect, it's graceful. But if you look, you know, beneath, you know, underwater, the swan is paddling frantically. You know, that's what we try to do in hospitality. We're trying to perfect the swan technique. 
you know, on top where people can see, we, where we are visible. We are trying to make sure that everything is calm, smooth, and, 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 and orderly. But behind the scenes, it is a little bit chaotic. So, you know, if you are starting out, please expect that. And, you know, this industry, you know, like I said before, it's a remote island, especially if you go to a resort, it's a remote environment. It's a small, very small environment where you confine to very small space with a lot of people. So you have to adjust, you have to make adjustments to your life. So that will, I, I, I think that will be uh, my, you know, advice to, to anyone starting out. Be ready to adjust, be willing to take basic positions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hassan. Uh, you know, very true. And I, I quite like the last example that you gave. And I think, well, you know, while we're still in, you know, quite uh, in terms of the number of cases are still active and, you know, the country, you know, it's definitely not, not ready to reopen many, many, you know, type of uh, economic activities. But, you know, we're taking the risk in the, within the industry and we were reopening. And I'm sure as, as tourists comes, you know, what they're going to see on the top layer is going to be quite smooth and all the procedures, practices in place. But like you said, at the back end, we are very concerned to make sure that if something goes wrong, what will we do, you know? So the, 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 the rapid response team will be on the standby and they may look very good. So a very nice example. Thank you, Hassan. Um, I would like to one, one more question uh, from another participant. I would like to ask this question actually from Aisha. Aisha, the question is that um, I remember when I finished, when I was studying um, in a grade, uh, you know, eight uh, that year, after the work experience program and I, 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 I I remember I got an opportunity to work actually with the, um, there was a company that came to reclaim the land in Hitadu and I work at the dredging company and my job was just to make sure that I look after the attendance of all the workers that comes there. For 14 days, that's what I did, but I loved it. I still remember how it looks like. Work experience, work experience is very important. I mean, right now there's no formal programs there. How important are these work experience programs that we have to offer to school students uh, during their part of study? Uh, work experience is very important. Uh, like Afif, uh, I also did work experience uh, when we were, I think uh, it, it was an educational policy at that time where uh, starting from grade eight to 10, you have to complete, uh, I think 20 to 40 hours by the time you complete your grade 10. Uh, so I also went through the same thing. And I think it's an uh, eye-opening uh, thing for students to understand that working environment working with different kind of people, nationality, accepting people for who they are. Uh, I think uh, in an earlier conversation, Hassan just mentioned about uh, how we differentiate people based on religion. And I think that's a very uh, a true thing because in a normal working environment also, we are going through that cultural differences. We, we are such a diversified economy right now, we are, but still we are unable to accept foreigners. We are unable to accept their cultural differences. So working experience starting at an early stage, it doesn't have to be a full-time job where you have to uh, uh, like be grilled for so many things, take responsibility. But from little, little things, you understand that what is a working environment. And that will really help. I feel like that really helps students to build that stamina to be patient that you don't get to uh, it go, uh, you don't get to achieve uh, everything you want at the as, uh, whenever you want you see that people work through how they struggle through to achieve their dreams so work experience is a very important thing and uh, starting from all level to during their a level also they need to focus on work experience i don't think uh, we need to totally focus education sector into academics yes academics is a part of it but if you are not able to implement what you are learning in your academics, then there's no purpose of uh, you going into the working environment. So it helps you to uh, understand what you are learning. You are able to apply those things during those stages. And I think in industry-wise, what, uh, what we can do to improve is given these opportunities, I think um, this is where industry professionals and education sector can build that open uh, uh, opportunities to schools, give them at least one day session or a minimum number of hours, give that opportunity to students to explore, like I mentioned earlier. So 
exploration is the key to uh, key to their decision making if they are not able to know what is it what is around them what uh, if they do not understand what are the opportunities they have they will definitely end up making a wrong decision yes our education sector there are limitations sometimes in uh, most of the islands do not offer if i am not mistaken there are some islands that do not offer science stream but there are students who are really interested in this field but due to a lack of opportunities they are forced to do business or uh, arts so our education industry definitely have a limitation that maybe in future it will get uh, rectified and we will have more opportunities but work experience will really really help to build that bridge when you enter yourself into a full career path Thank you very much. Uh, great response there. I know we're running a little bit over the time. So I'm going to close the uh, webinar just in a moment. But before we close this virtual learning experience, I would like to get a closing remark from each of our panelists. So we're going to start with uh, Dr. Asia. Asia, what's your closing remark regarding this and final thoughts? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, Hussein, uh, for the opportunity. And thank you, Mark, uh, Exco. Uh, I believe that uh, these kind of sessions are really necessary in our society. And as I said before, also, actually, this pandemic, this uh, COVID-19 situation uh, has uh, taken us uh, out of the box uh, and uh, opened us towards uh, webinars and uh, kind of sessions where we can reach anybody anywhere without having to wait them to come to us physically, especially uh, ones uh, like us who live, in, uh, live on these uh, islands. Uh, and uh, to the students and the listeners, I would like to say that uh, uh, chase your dreams and uh, do not uh, let anybody uh, tell you otherwise that you cannot do anything or that is not possible or any of those kind of things. In fact, uh, I would like to share that my, my son, who is only 10 years old, if you ask him who, what, what you want to be, he will say the president of Maldives. And, we, and without any, any, any kind of uh, um, reluctancy or anything, he will just say it. And in fact, he has one ideal person, uh, one of our uh, former presidents. And he has, a, my son has a list of all the jobs that president has done. And he want to start from where he started and do all the jobs to reach uh, the level of uh, president of Maldives. So that is, uh, I'm okay with it. I, I don't know what he's going to do, but still I don't want anyone to tell him that he can't do it and it's not possible. I don't want anybody to tell him that. Uh, so uh, um, dear all, just, just um, try to be what you want to be. And uh, once you decide that you are going to be it and you're going to do it, there's uh, nothing which you can, nothing uh, which can stop you. So just keep trying till you achieve it. And um, yeah, thank you so much once again, Hussein. Um, hope we will be able to see more sessions like this. And uh, definitely our students are going to benefit a lot from this. And not only the students, even parents and the society. Thank you for the wonderful uh, work you are doing to add, uh, as you say, value to the society. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Asya. Uh, it was lovely that you, know, you participated. And and a great value to our panel discussion. Um, Hassan, your closing remarks, please, um, as we end the session just in a moment. Hassan. Thank you. Um, uh, once again, like uh, Dr. Asiya said, Afif, thank you very much uh, for the work that uh, you and Mark are doing. Um, and and um, I'm honored to, to be able to contribute. Um, you know, and then I'll, I'll be willing to contribute even um, in the future if you have any opportunities that I can contribute to. Um, in closing, I think um, I think we should all you know question ourselves because if we remember our childhood, and if most of us have uh, you know small kids in our families. And if you observe them, if you observe any three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, you know, until they are 13, 14, 15, we are all very curious. We are all very inquisitive. Um, we all ask questions, you know, but the curiosity fades away. Uh, I think we should all ask the question, 
when did we start not caring when did we start becoming so apathetic um when we when did we start just saying you know akuna matata or you know everything will be fine or no problems we have to think for ourselves and and, and then you know ask the right question ask as many questions as possible um and then uh, again it's ibn sina didn't start writing until he was 21 he started practicing medicine is at 16 but he started writing about astronomy you know all these things calculus and all this stuff until he was 21 big at that the time was quite you know aged by by those standards so you know it's never too late to to go and try a new passion like i said i would encourage people to try new things to try new passions like dr asia said i know you know as a 16 year old i still remember um, you know reading a book uh, called uh, as the crow flies it it's a rags to riches story set in england and and in the opening quote goes like you know if your dreams are big enough not even your enemy can stop you so for me you know career like i said in the beginning it, you know it, it's not a linear thing it's you can have as many zigzags as you want you can you know segue into uh, you know any anything but as, as as long as you you enjoy the journey um, so you know, start enjoying start finding things out start exploring uh, start asking questions and once again uh, thank you very much um, also to the participants um, thank you for spending uh the last one hour or so with with us and for me for us uh, i think it's it's a beautiful gift thank you very much yeah. thank you hasan for those um, wise words i'm sure our participants enjoyed listening to that and learning that aisha your closing remarks please uh, i would like to call on stephen forway uh, it says i am not a product of my circumstances i am a product of my decisions so career guidance or when you are choosing a career it's all about what you really want you have to have that passion to chase your dream how what, what like all the circumstances all those hurdles if you really want to achieve that you have to be patient and the other thing is students you need to be self aware what you really need what you really want what is your hopes and dreams what you can do to the community in the long run what you really want to be like down the line after you complete 20 years of work whether you want to be a, your own self like you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be able to work with people so it's all about your decision so the important thing is understand yourself be self aware and please do not skip your studies focus on your studies right now i'm saying this to students because a lot of students think yes their o level or a level is not so important now especially because of the free education system we have they think so don't skip do as much as you can yes you will fail sometimes but buckle up stand up and do again you can do it and the other thing i want to is my final remark is to the industry people uh if you want Uh, people who are capable you also need to do your part where uh, help the education system to train these students because you cannot expect the whole education sector to uh, send you a full trained candidates who have the perfect who is a perfect candidate to the industry it goes both the ways with the helping with from uh, education industry and all the other industries so if you want the best candidates we all need to work together to get the right output and thank you for all pass, uh, participants for listening for such a long time <laughs> thank yeah. you thank you happy for the opportunity yeah thank you all our speakers hasan dr asia aisha i mean you all uh, shared some great wisdoms to all our participants i really we really hope that you have enjoyed our session you know i know we have taken more time than what we wrote in the poster because 
great learning opportunities. And when you especially have speakers like Hassan and Dr. Asya and Aisha, I mean, this is such an important topic for our community. So go to the chat box and write how much you enjoyed this experience. Give some love and care and some, um, you know, uh, comments of, uh, gratitude to all our, our panelists and also to, to yourself as a participant. We hope you enjoyed and also to those who are watching Facebook Live, thank you very much for keeping the conversations and uh, comments uh, very active. We, you know, we, we, we have been observing, so thank you very much. And in case if someone missed it, we will actually be uploading the record of the entire session. So all, uh, you know, the future viewers and anyone else can watch this. We look forward to working with our community our community is why we do this, and we're we'll content serving our community, and that's what MAP stands for. Once again, thank you to our speakers this evening, Hassan, Dr. Asia, and Aisha, for really adding a great deal of value to our, our uh, event this evening. And you will hear about our next event coming up very, very soon. So stay tuned to our platforms. Thank you very much, and have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>